Ford's Cougar has sharpened up its act in third generation guys, evolving it into a much more credible upper mid-sized SUV contender. There's sharper styling, a much nicer cabin, and extra technology that segment buyers will like. Plus, this blue oval brand crossover still offers class-leading drive dynamics. And across the range, more frugal conventional engines share showroom space with a range of electrified ones. There's a choice of mild hybrid, self-charging hybrid, and PHEV plug-in hybrid options. In short, if you're shopping in this sector, this is still a car you very much need to consider. For a best-selling volume brand, it's taken Ford a remarkably long time to come up with a really class competitive range of SUVs. For an awfully long period, the only credible crossover nameplate that the company offered was this one, the mid-sized Cougar model. And today, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the third generation version. The original Cougar, the first C394 series model, dates back to 2008, and it was one of the first affordable family SUVs to properly prioritize a decent driving experience. Rivals were beginning to copy that approach by the time the second generation C520 series version was launched, and then significantly updated in 2017, prior to the launch of this Mark III model in early 2020. Throughout that period, the Cougar sustained Ford's SUV sales as other less well-developed crossovers from the Blue Oval brand faltered, mainly because they were primarily developed for markets outside Europe. The rather half-baked, smaller Echo Sport, for example, or the larger, clunkier Ford Edge. Today, though, a Ford showroom is a much more inviting place for crossover customers. This Cougar sits just above another recently launched Blue Oval brand SUV that we've strongly praised, the Puma. And it's a huge step forward from its Mark II predecessor in terms of engine technology, media connectivity and overall sophistication. Both mild hybrid and, as in this case, plug-in hybrid powertrains are available. Plus, this car is significantly bigger than the design it replaces, recognising its new role as Ford's flagship SUV. But one thing we're told hasn't changed. Ford promises us that this Cougar will be better to drive than ever. A lot of this thanks to an all-new C2 platform shared with the Focus hatch. Now, if the Cougar can deliver on that brief, yet up its game elsewhere, rivals will have much to fear. So let's put this car to the test. For years, Ford's Cougar was the mid-sized SUV crossover that other brands turned to if they were developing a car in this class and they wanted it to be good to drive. This Mark III design had to offer drive dynamics that return this model to a preeminent position in its segment, which was quite a brief for the Ford engineers because it also had to be bigger and to carry around quite a lot more weighty equipment. Helping them was this third generation Cougar model's adoption of engineering from the planet's best handling family hatch, the Ford Focus. Uh, this SUV shares that car's stiffer and more sophisticated C2 platform and unlike the Focus, has has the advantage that in all its forms it features proper all-round independent suspension. On top of that, the steering column is twice as stiff as that of the previous Mark II Cougar and compared to that old car there's a 10% gain in torsional stiffness, a 44mm wider track and a 10mm lower centre of gravity. All sounds quite promising. And so it proves. Uh, on the road, this car feels like what it is, a slightly larger, slightly taller version of the Focus. The steering isn't perfect in terms of feedback, but it is quick and accurate, and it's much better than the previous model's electrified rack. Push on through the bends, and uh, this Ford delivers the kind of confidence that you simply wouldn't expect a contender in this class to be able to give. Um, you will want to know about engines, because quite a lot has changed beneath the bonnet this time around. Now things kick off with a couple of Focus derived uh, 1.5 litre units, a four cylinder 120 PS EcoBlue diesel with manual or auto transmission, or a manual only three cylinder EcoBoost petrol power plant. And that's offered with either 120 or 150 PS. Ideally though, you'd stretch to one of the electrified engines that Ford really wants you to try in this car. There are several, although all of them are combustion based. 
The mild hybrid option ought to be the most popular. That's a two litre Eco Blue MHEV diesel with 150 PS. Although the proposition was slightly hobbled at the time of this test by Ford's inability to offer it with either automatic transmission or all wheel drive. For both of those two features, uh, in a black pump fueled Cougar derivative, uh, you'll have to have the more conventional 2 litre Eco Blue 190 PS diesel model. Uh, that has the largest towing capacity in the range, incidentally, it's rated at 2.1 tonnes. Your other route to 4x4 traction in a Cougar is to opt for the self charging HEV full hybrid petrol model, which can be had in front driven or all wheel drive forms and uses a 2.5 litre normally aspirated Duratec engine. This is mated to an electric motor, or in the case of the all wheel drive variant, a pair of electric motors powered by a 1.1 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that sits at the back of the car. Total power output is 200 PS and the front wheels are driven via a power split CVT belt driven six speed automatic transmission. Much the same engineering uh, also applies to the top PHEV plug-in hybrid variant, uh, 225 PS in power that we're trying here. Although with this front drive only model, there's a much bigger 14.4 kilowatt hour battery facilitating a 35 mile WLTP all electric driving range. That is when the car is fully charged, which takes three hours from the 7.4 kilowatt uh, garage wall box or six hours from a standard domestic plug. Uh, this plug-in derivative WLTP combined cycle fuel reading is up to 201.7 mpg and the quoted WLTP CO2 return is 32 grams per kilometer, which makes possible this Ford PHE model's impressively low year one 10% benefit in kind taxation rating. Ford's relative inexperience in engineering EV technology does show in a few areas. Uh, the slightly abrupt way that the car steps off from rest, for example, and the slightly grabby feeling that you get from the brakes. But there are lots of drive options which allow you to maximize this plug-in Cougar model's all-electric range. Now, primarily, you'll be using four EV drive modes. EV Now focuses the drivetrain on all-electric output. EV Charge, rather inefficiently, tops up the battery using the engine. And EV Later holds the current state of charge, so you can save it for the urban driving that you might want to do later on in your trip. Most of the time, though, uh, you'll be simply leaving the car in EV Auto, where the clever electronics determine the most efficient use of engine and battery power. Now you can boost brake regeneration and therefore energy harvesting by activating this uh, L setting on the rotary gear selector. And there are various efficiency readouts to help you drive more frugally. Cougar buyers were ready for a change, for more emotional design, as Ford styling chief Amco Lienartz puts it. He characterizes this Mark III Cougar shape as being visually sleeker, lower and wider. And he reckons it'll make you feel excited just by looking at it. Well, we're not sure we go that far, but there's certainly a switch in visual emphasis here, away from the more rugged appearance of the previous Cougar to something a touch more elegant and bigger. This third generation car is 89 millimeters longer and 44 mils wider than its predecessor, but despite that, it's around 80 kilos lighter. So you can see why Ford's pen men feel quite pleased with themselves. So the exterior has been upgraded. What about the cabin? Can it reflect? Ford's desire for a small but subtle move up market. Given that the dash had to be carried over virtually unchanged from an ordinary Focus family hatch, that was a big ask. But Ford's design team have done their best to embellish it. As with the Puma, there's a TFT instrument cluster screen ahead of the driver that changes in theme according to the driving mode that you select. And quite a lot of tinsel has been added to upper spec variants to try to justify the more exalted price positioning. Although uh, ultimately some hard and scratchy lower order plastics betray this cabin's relatively humble origins. Still, in compensation, you sit satisfyingly high behind the wheel. There's plenty of storage provision and it feels uh, considerably more spacious up front here than the previous generation model. Ford says there's 
43 millimeters more shoulder room. And despite the lower exterior roof height, there's 13 mils more headroom too. Uh, the brand says the instrument panel positioning has been optimized to increase this perception of space, uh, perhaps most notably with the so-called floating design of this SYNC 3 center dash touchscreen. Right, let's look at rear passenger space. Uh, the more generous exterior dimensions mean there's now 36 millimeters more hip room and 35 millimeters more headroom. But if you've previously owned a Cougar, the big news here will be the addition by Ford of this sliding bench incorporated as a result of customer feedback. It slides over a range of 150 millimeters. It's 60-40 split, and with both sections fully back, rear occupants can enjoy a best-in-class legroom figure of 1,035 mils. The side squab-mounted levers allow seat backs to recline as well uh, for greater comfort on longer journeys. Let's finish with a look out back. Uh, once the tailgate is raised, a very decently sized boot with a low loading nip is revealed. It's square in shape with little wheel arch intrusion. 475 litres in size with conventional variants, although that figure falls to 411 litres with this PHEV model. Uh, you retract these seat backs using these rather flimsy uh, cargo sidewall catches, and when the seats eventually spring forward, they don't fold completely flat. Total capacity to the window line is rated at 1,534 litres or 1,481 in this PHEV model. Having in recent years at last got serious about SUVs, Ford has also got serious about this Cougar as it needed to. This car isn't perfect, of course. Uh, the cabin, although it's much improved, still doesn't have quite the quality you'll find in some rivals. And some elements of the way the drive dynamics work in this PHEV model, the slightly sharp start-off demeanor and the little grabbiness with the brakes uh, betray Ford's comparative lack of experience with EV technology. Where Ford's experience does stand this car in good stead is when it comes to the ride and handling balance that's been achieved here. Uh, like its smaller Puma showroom stablemate, this Cougar is a class leader in that regard. In summary then, it's clear that the blue oval brand now means business when it comes to this class of SUV. And if you doubt that, then you need to try this one. <laughs>